Hello everyone and welcome to this my video on stationary points, part of the mathematical methods units, one and two course here in Australia, but equally valid throughout the world, because stationary points are universally constant, I think. Anyway, my name is Darren from Maths Guru. Yes, my little corner of the interweb down here, where you can download all of these lesson notes that I'm about to write all over and watch the videos and answer VCAR questions and all sorts of wonderful things as well. Head over there, it's absolutely free to sign up. Now, my learning objectives today are to understand what it means to be a stationary point. This is massively important. And know how to find stationary points of a particular function. And I alluded to this in my previous video, which again is absolutely available on mathsguru.com. I wish I could have spelt that when I was younger. We have done a lot so far with differentiation and it is massive. The methods three and four course in year 12 here in Australia is pretty much three quarters of all of this stuff. Differentiation, drawing sketches, or sorry, sketches of curves and finding stationary points, finding crossing points, and, and sort of interpreting what all of this means. And as I sort of said previously in, a, in a, my last video, if I look at drawing a cubic, for example, and this is just some random cubic that I am drawing, is it gonna, nope, turn that into a straight line, that was annoying. If I draw that cubic there, then I have tools from everything we have done so far to help me find crossing points. I can find that crossing point there, and I can find that crossing point there, and I can find that crossing point there, or otherwise known as roots. I can find my y-axis intercept. Uh, what else could I find? Well, if it was a quadratic, I could find lines of symmetry and, and minimum points and maximum points. But once you get to cubics and quartics, it becomes a little bit more challenging. Why? Because we have these points here, that maximum there, and that minimum there. And we've already used the terminology previously in quadratics, but how do we find the values, the actual coordinate points? Because it isn't the case, uh, sadly, that this maximum is halfway between here and here. It isn't the case that the minimum is halfway between here and here. It just, that's not true for cubics. They're not symmetrical around these crossing points. So we need to learn a different way. And we've sort of come across this uh, earlier, because if I was to try and find the tangent or the gradient of that point there, how would I do it? Well, I'd either differentiate it, or if you were back in the United Kingdom, we would draw a line. Well, there's my tangent. How would I find the gradient here? There, I'd draw a tangent. How would I find the gradient here? I'd draw a tangent. So the question here is if I was to go to the very, very top of this graph and draw a tangent, what would it look like? Well, believe it or not, it would be a horizontal line. And what do we know about the gradient of a horizontal line? It's zero. And so what we find out is a stationary point, yes, is a point where there is a zero gradient, all right? Now that one infinitesimally small point will have a gradient of zero, we can find that. And in this situation, we would say that we would have a maximum, all right? Our stationary point there would be known as a maximum because the curve basically hits a maximum y value that particular point there. And later on, we start calling these local maximums. And again, we can get to a point where we have our cubic here, for example, where that point there is a maximum. What about this point here? Is that going to also have a zero gradient? Absolutely, it's going to have a zero gradient because at the very lowest point, if I was to draw a tangent to that point, my gradient is going to be zero. Do you see the problem that's about to come? Because we know that that has a gradient of zero, yes? And we now know that that has a gradient of zero. And theoretically, we could find the points on there with a gradient of zero. How? Well, we differentiate. And we solve for where the differential is equal to zero. Because when we're differentiating, we're finding the gradient of a tangent at a point. So by putting that equal to zero, we'll find where my gradient has a zero value. But how on earth would I know which one is a maximum and which one is a minimum? Well. Let's not run before we can walk. That comes a little bit later on. Then we get to this thing called a stationary point of inflection. Now that's different from a point of inflection, okay? And again, for those of you doing specialist maths, you'll get into more of that a little bit later on. And in year 12, I think we get into it as well. But now a stationary point of inflection. If I look here, and that's the graph of y equals x cubed at this point here, and at just that point, that infinitesimal point, there is actually a zero gradient as well. Ah, so we have maximums, minimums, 
and now stationary points of inflection. These are all points that we can now test for and find the locations of. So let's hit some examples. Find the stationary points for the following function. All right, so basically put it in your summary book. To find the stationary points, you are going to differentiate and then solve for that differential equal to zero. So we now know, he says, y dash becomes equal to, well, that 9 is going to disappear. That's going to be minus 12 minus 4x. So that's my differential function all the way around that curve. Um, but I now want to test for some specific points. And we know that at a stationary point, we know that m is equal to 0. Or in this situation, y dash is equal to 0. So we'd have minus 12 minus 4x is equal to 0. Uh, minus 4x becomes equal to 12, so x becomes equal to negative 3. ka -ching! Life is good, and is that the correct answer? I just check, yes, x is equal to 3. So now what do we do? Because most people, believe it or not, move on, but uh, Vicar get very, very upset with this because it is a stationary point, and a point has a coordinate. And so what I would now need to do for every single one of these questions, and please don't get tricked, is I now need to substitute that in, right? Now, again, you're not substituting that into here. If you substitute it into there, you're going to get zero. And again, too many people do that. Once you found this x value, that's where the stationary point is. you got to try and find the y value, not the y dash value. So we know now that y is given by 9 minus 12 lots of x, which is negative 3, minus 2 lots of negative 3 squared, which is going to give me 9 minus, oh, that's going to be plus 12, 24, 36, uh, 9, and that's going to be minus 18. So 36 minus 18 is 18, plus 9 is going to give me 27. And so we would say, therefore, my stationary point has the coordinate of minus 3, comma, 27. Now, the good news is we can do this on our CAS as well. I'm just going to uh, clear down what we were working with on a previous lesson. So let's get rid of that. Oh, I always do that when I'm talking. I'm like, no, concentrate. Uh, right. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm going to do f of x. Uh, he says typing in the screen. So let's do f of x becomes equal to 9 minus 12x minus 2 x squared. Normally I'd put all the minuses, uh, the times is in, but let's just check that the calculators got that correct. Minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 9. Yes. So what I'm now going to do is differentiate it. So I'm going to go menu, calculus, derivative, and I'm going to do that with respect to x of function of x. And there we go. Minus 4x minus 12. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve that for equal to zero. Why? Because this is my differential function. So I'm going to copy that down, he says, in a moment, because I want to solve. So I'm going to do solve, copy that down, uh, equals 0, comma, x. I'm trying to find the x values for where that differential is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 3. So now to find my other coordinate, I'm going to go f of negative 3, hit enter, and it gives me 27. Now, you can shortcut all of this by saying solve df of x, yep, equals 0, comma, x, hit enter, and it does it all in one go for you for that x is negative 3, and then you will basically just substitute that in again. But your calculator is here to try and help you, and you're advised to make sure that you actually do use your calculator, um, but again, it says to find the points. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. But can I ask one quick favour? Can you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Subscribing is genuinely the only way I know that someone out there is actually watching my content. Who watches maths videos other than you and possibly my mother? Seriously, uh, if I get more than three subscribers at the end of each day, I genuinely think I'm going viral. Sad? Yes. I actually do a happy dance and the dog thinks I'm going nuts. Clicking that button really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much in advance. But enough of me already. Um, maybe let's go back to the loner talking to himself in a room. Now, moving on to another example, what have we got here? We've got p equals uh, 2t cubed minus 5t squared minus 4t plus 13. And we have to be very careful to make sure that we notice that t in this situation has to be greater than zero. More on that in a moment. Again, they're trying to trick you by using different letters, so make sure you use the letters they give you in the question. Don't change all of these to x's and y's. Uh, it all goes horribly wrong. So in this situation, we're going to say p dash is equal to 
6t squared minus 10t minus 4, okay, because of 13 it will be differentiating to 0. We're trying to find my stationary points, so we know now that p dashed equals 0 is where my stationary points will be. So I end up with 6t squared minus 10t minus 4 equals 0. I can now see that that can all be halved or divided by 2. So we get 3t squared minus 5t minus 2 equals 0. Now to shortcut the process here, I'm going to tell you that we can basically just factorize now that as 3t plus 1 multiplied by t minus 2 is equal to 0. Right, no factor law, so therefore we get 3t plus 1 is equal to 0, t minus 2 is equal to 0. So 3t is equal to negative 1, t is equal to negative 1 on 3, or t is equal to 2. Now again, lots of people will then stop here, but eh, you can't, because as I said in the previous example, stationary point, we've got to have a point, coordinate, but again, we come back to this now, t has to be greater than zero. Are there any values that we can't have? Yep, t in this situation would be minus one third. So we're now gonna say nope, because t has to be greater than zero. We are expecting you to look where you get multiple answers and check the validity of each of those answers. And where they are not valid, you have to discount them and give a reason as to why you are discounting them. And in this situation, I'm discounting it as t has to be greater than zero. So t is equal to two is gonna be my only value I can accept. So now knowing that, I gotta substitute this back into here to get my value of my stationary point. So we know that p now is gonna be equal to two lots of two cubed minus five lots of two squared minus four lots of two plus 13. Let's see if my maths can cope with this. Two cubed is eight. Eight times two is 16. Uh, two squared is four. Five times four is 20. Uh, minus eight and then plus 13. 16 minus 20 is minus four. Minus eight will give me minus 12. Plus 13 is going to give me a value of one. So therefore, my stationary point will have a coordinate of two comma one. Can you calculate to do all this for you? I should Coco. Why not stop the video and have a look? Find the stationary points for the following functions. Notice how repetitive this is getting. It's all the same. Uh, let's see what we get then. So we've got y equals. Should we do this on my calculator? Uh, we'll check on my calculator. It's nice to see it do it by hand. So we're going to have y dashed is equal to 3 minus 3x squared. We're looking for where y dashed is equal to 0. So 3 minus 3x squared is equal to 0. Uh, minus 3x squared is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 3 gives me x squared is equal to 1. And this is where everything goes horribly wrong again, because the number of people who don't realize now that that's going to have two solutions, x is equals minus 1 and plus 1. I've got more than one solution. I'm going to check the validity. Is there any conditions or are there any conditions here that say we can't have more than one value or is x limited in any way? No, it isn't. So we now know they've got x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 1. Are they my final answers? Nope, because I've got to substitute into there to get my points. So I'm going to put 1 into there. I'm going to get y is equal to 4 plus 3 minus 1, which is going to give me 6. And here y is going to be equal to negative 1. So 4 minus 3 minus one cubed is minus one plus one, which is gonna be five minus three, which is gonna give me two. And so in which case I'm gonna get my values as, so my stationary points are gonna be at one comma six and minus one comma two, ka -ching. Right, the curve with equation y, oh, now again, these are so formulaic. These questions come up all the time. The curve with equation y equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c passes through that point there. Now, the minute they give me this point here, I'm like, hold on a moment. They're giving me an x value and a y value, which I can substitute into there. And it has a stationary point at 2, 7. Oh, hold on a moment. It's giving me a stationary point at 2, 7. Now, again, weirdly, a lot of people don't realize that that's two pieces of information in one. How? Well, because that is also a coordinate. If there's a stationary point, it's also a coordinate on the line. So I've got two coordinates that I can substitute into here. And I know that if it's a stationary point, the gradient at that point is equal to zero. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, well, y dashed is equal to 
3x squared plus 2ax plus b. Now that c is a constant it's going to go. I just want to check that I've differentiated there, right? 3x squared plus 2ax plus b, all right? And we now know that at the point 2 comma 7, Right, we know y dashed is equal to zero. So we're now going to write zero is equal to three lots of, well, we're only interested in the x value two, two squared, plus two lots of a times two plus my b value. So that's going to give me two squared is four, 12 plus four a plus b is equal to zero. And you're going to turn around and say, well, why does that help me? Well, in a previous uh, section of the course, we used our CAS calculator to make life here a lot, lot easier. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to bring up my CAS. Yep, and let's see. Let's clear that down. No, I don't want to. Yes, let's bring up one of those. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my function and say f of x is, oh, he says every single time, f of x becomes equal to 3 times x squared. Now, here you've got to be very careful, plus a times x squared. You've got to put the times in or the calculator gets really, really confused, plus c, all right? And then I'm going to do f of x to make sure it's there. Uh, yep, for some strange reason, it has factorized it, but we won't get too caught up with that. Now, I'm now going to go menu, algebra, system of equations, solve system of equations, solve system of equations. I'm going to have three equations, and it's going to have a comma b comma c. They are the values I am trying to find. And again, why? Because my function up here has got a, b, and c. Now, my first one here is basically nice and easy, because when I've been given a coordinate point, I can now go that f of 0 equals 5. All I'm saying is when I put 0 in, I get 5 out. And in the same way here, I can go f of 2 equals 7. ka -ching, right? Now, because I've got three equations, I've got to give it three pieces of information. And I also know, because I've worked it out a moment ago, that I've got this equation as well. So if I type that in as 12 plus 4 times a plus b equals 0, hit enter, lo and behold, out comes my answer, nice and easy. Now, the chances are these type of questions would probably be in... Uh, a calculator section. If they ask you to draw that by hand, that would be horrible and take pages and pages. Totally possible, don't get me wrong, because all you'd be doing is substituting uh, 0, 0,5 into here, you'd be substituting 2, 7 into here, and then you'd be sort of doing all this stuff as well. Mm, possible, nice, not really. So in this situation, using my calculator, I know that A is equal to minus 3.5, B is equal to 2, and c is equal to 5. Let's turn off my calculator, because I do that all the time as well. What's this? Well, we're done. Sheesh, that happened. Uh, by the end of the lesson, hopefully we have understood what it means to be a stationary point. Yes, maximum, minimum, and a stationary point of inflection, and know how to find them of a function. I just want to say, that question there is so formulaic. If you learn how to do that, I'm fairly sure, by hand as well as with your calculator, you should be able to smash pretty much any question in an exam. And I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this has been useful. Uh, if it has, head over to mathsguru.com. You can download all the summary notes uh, from here, and there's so much more on there. All right. Tell your teachers if you found it useful. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.